in order to make sure you write that everything will be quite, quite excellent in 2050, past, deadline, past the deadline and with jet lag, I decide to sleep. I got into JFK yesterday at midday and the late afternoon I woke up in that perfect zone, fuzzy and vague, which is as close to being Audrey Lord matched up with James Baldwin as I can humanly get. <laughs> to get into deep Audrey Lord in 2050, the world will all, sorry, the oil will all be stretched out one molecule thick, but tougher than a spider web, and it will be some nanotechnology all into and all over each other. I didn't like that idea. In 2050, all the globe will be inside fully the politics of Audrey Lord and James Baldwin. We will carry everybody and their pain but their love and even the internet of all things will have done various editions of deeper and deeper and deeper. More than these bad days of 2015, which are shallow. This idea is not working. To make this Baldwin Baldwin Audrey Lord place work in this narrative, a lot of bleeding and killing has to happen between now and 2050. But that now makes me scared that this is ending up like the Game of Thrones. Because <laughs> we all know winter is coming and all that. Like Garissa and Westgate and the migrants last week drowning in the Mediterranean, and fuck, fuck the EU, and fuck, fuck France, Africa. Okay. I take a nap and chew a cookie. Jacob, the hotel is nice, by the way. I am happy to be far away from this New York. I used to live in upstate New York and have missed it. Kenya is a different kind of accountable. For people here over beer, I, not, I notally call it being their power bottoming. So last night, scared of loving something enough to start this piece, I ended up on Facebook and Twitter. Our vice president, a man whose kidneys always seem to be cruising us on a slow motion towards the genocide, decided to point his finger, this time at homosexuals. And in, the good, this, and in this good tradition of avoiding this deadline, I dove right in on social media until six o'clock this morning. <laughs> it is 2 p.m. this afternoon, and this man came up to me. He has a nice, sorry, he has a nice three-day Iranian stubble. 50 years from now, in Tehran. He has a Zoroastrian way about him. I mean, by this, he feels safe because that shit is old. Zoroaster. I was once told by a very smart European architecture type that when there's shit in the world, it will always be good to hide out in a beautiful ruin. The kind has be that has been there and done that. He meant like Italy, you know, where buildings crumble and you want to eat them like cake, and the museum wears nice sweaters and shoes, and who cares about, you know, whatever. I think that's what he meant. And most certainly, Kenya, sorry, is 100 years old in 2050. And being there and doing that in ways that makes the economist very happy, and James Baldwin very upset indeed. He wasn't that kind of blue collar the 2050 Iranian, I mean. I promise that melty feeling was most certainly not just his hairy forearms. Over 35, over, over these 35 years, I have stretched out politically and in my body and soul. I've triggered all my permutations, examined my inner me's. I have outgrown the right, uh, sorry, I have outgrown hot men <laughs> with raw asphalt stomachs. 
like asphalt just before it dries or is melting and grainy in a movie set in a hot place. Then they wipe the stomach. So, comma, many, comma, many, comma, many people are dying. So we just sit there in Tehran before the panel. The sky is wide and high with metal and things thrusting and twisted into shapes of arrival, you know, to the center of the world, like New York then, this Tehran now. I knew I was grateful that he pulled me into his cigarette break outside the conference. I'm really hoping he takes me home. Like everybody, now I'm tired and don't really know why, and I really, really want somebody with enough solid stubborn in him to hold me tight and gruffly with a lot of hard stubble and tongue in my ear. To say, stay, stay still, stay 